Welcome to FBB Forum. Um, if you like this content, please be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Instagram page. I'm very pleased to welcome the beautiful IFBB Pro Women's Bodybuilding competitor, Michelle Bogdan, to the podcast. Uh, Michelle earned her pro card last year at the 2023 North Americans, and she's going to be making her pro debut in one week at the inaugural Triple O Dynasty show in um, Phoenix area. Um, she actually has a lot of uh, things going on right now. She she and her husband own a gym. Um, she does tanning at bodybuilding shows. She actually makes competition suits for other competitors um, with her company Maximus. Um, she's active duty military and, and works full time there. And um, one really cool thing is her husband and brother are making their um, bodybuilding debuts in NPC an amateur also at Triple O. So welcome, uh, Michelle. It's really great to have you here. I, I don't know how you get any sleep. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I want to mention too, um, behind me, I've got my my uh, new logo that was designed by Paige Sabidra. Uh, you know, it kind of looks like I'm sprouting horns a little bit, but I kind of like the look of it. <laughs> I like it. It's kind of cool though. So I just want to give a shout out to Paige for designing such a great logo. So my first few questions are about um, how did you get started in bodybuilding? And uh, did you have an athletic or a sports background before you started? So I've been an athlete pretty much my whole life. I was always in sports from junior high all the way through high school. I uh, ran track junior high, played volleyball junior high, basketball in junior high. And then high school, I ran varsity track all four years. I was varsity wrestling my freshman, sophomore year. And then I went over to the shooting team. Um, but yeah, so I've been, I've been an athlete my whole life, had horses, rodeoed. That was kind of my weekend thing was doing barrel racing when I was a kid. So really, um, always, always athletic. And then while I was in college, I, uh, started working with a trainer named Mike Shiabla out of Missoula. And he, uh, he's like, you should think about doing this. Your genetics are great. And so they hadn't, they had just started coming out with physique a couple of years after I had started. So it was like figure was was the only option I had, figure fitness back then. So we were playing with it. I never quite got on stage. And then in 2017, I finally finally got on stage after having two kids. So wow. Uh, yeah. That's oh that's something I forgot to mention too. You have you're the mom of two. Um how, yeah. how old are your daughters? Ten and eight. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Um and um, where I was curious, where did you grow up? California. I grew up in Southern California, San Bernardino Redlands. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I was thinking there was another um, bodybuilder I know who I believe she did barrel racing and she did horses was uh, Amanda Snooks. And oh, yeah. she got her pro card recently, too. Yeah, she she got the pro card the same day I did. Same oh, show. yeah. That, at North Americans, right? That's awesome. Yeah, that was a good, North Americans was really good this year. I was really pleased that Brittany Parrish got her uh, pro card there too. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, I was curious, like who kind of convinced you to do your first uh, contest for, for bodybuilding? Well, like I said, uh, Mike kind of got the idea in my head back in like, 2010. And then um, I finally was like, all right, I'm gonna do one in 2012. Then had a baby. <laughs> and then uh, 2015 or 14, I was like, all right, I think I'm going to do a show this year. A couple weeks later, I was like, oh, I'm pregnant. Never mind. So finally in 2017, one of my friends out here, um, she introduced me to another another gal that was a pro bodybuilder. And so uh, I started training with her for a little bit. And uh, and. She's actually who I partnered in the gym with, and that's kind of how it all got started. So I did my first show. I did figure my very first show in 2017. Then 2018, I was in school for military pretty much the whole year. And so in 2019, I started in physique. And I did, I think, three shows that year. And then um, 20... I did a couple of shows on physique and then finally in 22, I started bodybuilding. Wow. So. That's great. Yeah. That's great that you made that progression. Was that, I've heard from some ladies that they never 
thought they would do women's bodybuilding because they never thought they'd necessarily get that big. But were you reticent at all about doing the bodybuilding division? No, I was just trying to see where I fit in the most. And then after talking to the judges, they're like, because I was still doing crossovers back in 22, seeing between physique and bodybuilding, like where I landed the best. And I was doing better in bodybuilding. Yeah. And so they, and they told me, they're like, your frames, your frames, more bodybuilding, stick with bodybuilding. I said, okay. That's um, great. We need more women's bodybuilding competitors. So I think it's great that you pursued that that way. And yeah, my, one of my really good friends, she's like, she's like another sister, Rashana Boswell. Me and her have become really, really good friends the last few years. And, and uh, she was like, yeah, you got to do bodybuilding. Got to do bodybuilding. So. Oh, I love Rashana. Yeah. Masters Olympia champ. She's, she's amazing. Uh, yep. I do. I make her suits for her. So, yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, terrific. Yeah, I make cool. hers and Ivy suits. And then I made, uh, so yeah, at Olympia, I had Ivy, Rashana, D. Jackson, and Alex Hall were my girls at the O this year. So, wow, what a lineup! That's amazing, ladies. Wow, yeah, yeah that's terrific. Um, yeah, Rashana is amazing. I love her her shape. She just has like like superb it's genetics. Tiny waist, and yeah, she's just beautiful. I know. Yeah, she's really sweet. Um, now, I was curious as you were progressing in bodybuilding, did you have like a kind of a bodybuilding role model or fitness role model that you were looking up to? Um, I think I've just surrounded myself with so many of those women that it's just, it's part of my community. So I think between Rishnana and Ivy um, and uh, Alicia, I've, I mean, I've kind of surrounded myself with all these beautiful, strong women that have been at the top. And so you know, surrounding yourself with that, I think that really truly helps. That's terrific. That's really cool. Yeah, I love that. Love to hear that. Um, and um, yeah, I, I I think the bodybuilding, especially women's bodybuilding community, because it's relatively small, but I think it's kind of like a tight sisterhood in a sense too. Now, I was curious when was it kind of tough for you to get up on stage in a bikini for the first time? Was it kind of nerve wracking, or did it not bother you that much? I don't think it bothered me that much. Uh, no, I, I think I was more worried about just making sure I hit my poses right than I did. I think you, you get the nerves out on the first time you get on stage. So you're always shaky. You don't quite know. And then and then after the, the second round, you're you're pretty good. So how about these days? Do you get nervous at all on stage? I, or? I think everybody gets a little nervous if you're I mean, you just got to be able to be confident while you're doing it. So you get like the pre-stage jitters a little bit. I think everybody gets those, but. Hmm. Sure. I understand. Yeah, I bet. I, I think that would be a little, a little scary and um, yeah, um, especially the first time, but yeah, once you kind of get used to it, it's not, not as bad. Now um, I know you got your, as I mentioned earlier, your pro card at the 2023 North Americans. And I bet that was exciting. Um, what was right. your um, experience like at that show? And were you surprised that you, Got your pro card there? Well, um, I did. So I won both my classes, which was good. Um, and uh, we done USA's back in July leading into that. And I took second at USA's. So uh, we knew we just had to get a little bit better, a little bit tighter and and just come in with the best thing we could. And so um, the show was great overall. And then, uh, yeah. So... Very cool. Yeah. Was the, um, uh, yeah, that was in Pittsburgh. And I know that's kind of the, the home of bodybuilding because NPC and IFBB are based there. So um, I, and I, I would love to, to attend that show sometime in person, but I bet, I bet it was exciting. Did you have a big cheering section there? A big cheering section? Oh, uh, Rashana went with me. She was the only person that went there with me. So. Oh, really? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. She was excited for you to get your pro card, I bet. Oh, she was. I had her and then uh, one of my teammates, Candace Carr. Um, she uh, she was there too. So, so there was a thing where the way they had read, the, the way they had wrote the, the pro card winners, it was class winners get their pro card, not overall. For, and it was for all the bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. So at first, me and one other girl, we didn't get our cards. And so we went back and talked to Tyler and was like, hey, this is how this reads. And he's like, oh, not a big deal. Here's your cards. So 
He's like, oh, well, yeah. I'm so, so we ended up getting our cards, and Candace was there, sitting, waiting there, listening, waiting to see what was going to happen. So it was great. But... Did you get to get the card up on stage with the the big, the oversized card? Yeah, I got the big oversized card. It's actually my girls have. I have a picture of my girls holding it in the gym, but uh, yeah. So I've got a picture of me, but I'm in normal clothes, which is okay. But <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's good that they that good that you mentioned that too. It's like, where's my pro card? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> oh no, that's that's cool. Now I know um um that you plan on making your pro debut at the Triple O Dynasty, which is the very first um inaugural instance of this show. Um, but uh um so what's your plans for that? Are are you I bet you're pretty excited about that too. I'm super excited. I'm uh I'm super excited to be able to stand on the stage with you know two other olympians too which is pretty a pretty awesome thing to be able to do so um no i'm i am i'm excited plus plus i have my brother and my husband there too which makes it even you know that much better their very first show was kind of the three of us were like hey i'm gonna do this show they're doing all the men's divisions why don't you guys do this show too instead of just one of our local ones and so i said then you can all we can all be there together and so we're we're all doing the show it'll be it'll be a lot of fun i think so that's terrific i i um had mentioned um on the podcast a while back or on instagram that i'll be there too so i look forward to meeting the three of you because i think it's gonna be a great show yeah yeah it'll be it'll be awesome and we'll be all happy to to come and talk to you on friday or saturday so that's terrific very cool and um and you mentioned that you're going to have a videographer with you too. How did, how'd you get that? Um, so I met him through one of my other friends and, uh, he's captured some awesome pictures of, of me and Roshana at the O and that right. And at a couple of the other shows. So that he's been at. So we, uh, I reached out to him. I was like, Hey, me and my husband and my brother are all doing this show. Um, what would it take so he we you know we laid out the terms and we're like perfect so he's flying up on thursday and he'll be staying with us and we'll be able to document pretty much the whole thing which would be great that's awesome do you, do you have a youtube channel i can't remember i don't know <laughs> yeah oh cool how will you show it like on uh, instagram i guess the, the video yeah i'll put some stuff on instagram i know he'll show he'll, he'll share some stuff too so that's so awesome that's terrific that's going to be a great experience and uh to have it documented like that is really cool too. Yeah. Now I was curious in terms of your competitions, um, have the judges given you any feedback on where you need to improve your physique or your presentation? It's always just been more conditioning. So just more conditioning. Really? Yeah. How are you feeling conditioning wise now? Um, I, I think I'm better than I have been for any other show so far. So I'm, I'm happy where we're at, especially considering that I had uh, a very last minute move while I was in Utah. So the beginning of the month, which, you know, was some added stress that I didn't really need. But um, but yeah, I think for for where I'm at right now, I'm if I'm not 100 percent at this show, I will be by Van Nuys. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're doing Van Nuys and which will be two weeks after. Right. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. That's exciting, too. You had posted an abs shot recently and you your abs looked really good. You looked awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's great. Um and um uh in terms of the women's bodybuilding division, um, so you've competed in, in that since 2022, is that right? Mm -hmm. And with the North Americans, did you do physique as well? Nope, just bodybuilding. Oh, just bodybuilding. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just bodybuilding. Oh, but you also did masters? I did the 35 and over and the open. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. And, um, and how old are you now? I'm 37. Oh, okay. So you're not, you couldn't really do Masters Olympia because you're not quite old enough. I think that's 40 and over. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. But maybe when, yeah, when that comes around again, maybe next year you could, or well, in a couple of years. You could a do couple it. years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was curious, what would you say is uh, your favorite bodybuilding show so far? Um, that I've competed in or yeah that you've competed in um I think the uh so far so the high roller in Las Vegas the one that Mark Anthony does yeah um 
That one has been probably my favorite show out of all the shows I've done. Just the the way they cater to the athletes and um, the little gift bags and everything that they give to all their competitors is absolutely phenomenal. So they wow. do they do an awesome job at that show. And then uh, and then after that would probably be um, the show that Ribbit puts on up, up here between Montana and Washington. Ribbit Productions does an awesome job with their shows too up here. So the Emerald Cup and the Night of Champions are usually pretty good shows. I'm thinking uh, Triple O. I think it's going to be a good show because it's oh yeah the promoters are the you know Ms. Olympias and and um I think that they're I, I think they're going to really be have attention to detail and 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 such. Oh, I think so too. That's why I'm super excited to do this show. And I've also heard from that Van Isle is one of the best shows. Like very very kind to the competitors and just treats you really well. So I think I think that's going to be a good one for you too. Yep, I've seen a lot of good reviews on that one too. So that's, I mean, besides besides seeing those reviews, but just the fact that they were early shows um, for the year because I'm going to be gone for um, about a month for training here, just like right after. Um, I wanted to get a couple of early shows in that I knew were going to be good shows and uh, see just see how things roll out and what feedback I get so I can come back in the fall or summer with with the improvements I need to do. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a good strategy too. I was thinking about when Sherry Priami won um, Van Isle last year, that that was a kind of intentional strategy to get in on the first show. Um, and, and it worked, you know, she ended up winning that show. So, and, and got her Olympia ticket stamp. So I, I think doing an early show is, is, is smart, I think. I think it's a good idea. Um, now you mentioned you're also going to be guest posing soon. When, when is that going to be? Uh, the 13th at the big sky championships. So it's one of our, our local shows. That's so cool. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done that before guest posing? Nope. This will be my first one. I'm excited for it. That's so cool. I'm going to be there standing anyway. So I'll just, I'll tan with everybody else when everybody's down on the night before. And then I'll be backstage glazing people and getting people ready. And then in the evening up on stage so it'll be great now how did you get involved with doing the tanning like that because that's that's another um side gig you got going on <laughs> um so uh, a few years ago i reached out to Marilyn at lsr to find out what i what i could do to start learning how to do the competition tanning mm -hmm. and then um been in contact with her for quite a while she's actually sponsoring my tans this year which is awesome wow um, and uh she put me in contact with one of the girls that does all the local shows out here and in Oregon and Washington. So I've been working with uh, um, Kim with Center Stage Tan, who tans LSR. And so I've been working with her since, oh, for like three, four years. Okay. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. It's um, that, that uh, I think that's really neat that, that you're doing that and, and helping out. The competitors like that too um um is that uh it's kind of like wondered if, if they gave you something to practice on <laughs> the spray paint you know <laughs> oh i, I mean I, I practice on my husband and my mom <laughs> my kids <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah that's a good idea to practice and, and kind of get used to the the technique on yeah that. so once i bought my spray gun and everything i i practiced on anybody that would let me tan them so it was good <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's really cool yeah and, and lsr has my favorite color out of all the the companies that i've i've tanned with i've i've had tan on from and that's by far my favorite color so that's why i went with with them so it's just a it's a darker mahogany color which is i i haven't like seen it turn weird colors on somebody in this other inspired so good good or, or they have like a really weird ph imbalance so yeah i know yeah sometimes it can be kind of splotchy or yeah just sometimes it doesn't look right you know so yeah but yeah from what i've seen your tans have, have looked good now um do you have a, a prep coach or opposing coach so I do. I have so my my coach this year is Eric Broser. Um and my my husband and my brother's coach is Brett Swanson. Um 
and uh, posing. I mean, I I work with um, so Rashana gives me some feedback, but I've I've hired Mela Ash. She's worked with me on some good posing, like just done some couple little tweaks and finessing on, uh, you know, turn this just this way or just the movement, finessing the movement. Um, because I love her posing, and so yeah. Mela's been helping me. Um, I I met with Iris Kyle last year, and she gave me some amazing feedback in posing. And then um, Killian Ortega, I've never hired anybody to help me with a routine, but I actually got him to help me with a routine because his I wanted to pull in some more classic type poses into my routine this time, and his his posing is amazing. So um, I got him to help me with a pulling together a routine for these shows. What's his name again? Killian Ortega. He's out of Portugal. Oh yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. he he does a. Uh, uh, the posing coach academy or posing academy or something like that um but yeah killian ortega on instagram like if you look at he does a lot of posing tutorials and his posing is phenomenal okay great yeah i'm just writing down some of these names because so, i'll what i'll do is i'll include some of their instagrams down below in the comment okay. section so people want to check them out so that's great yeah um how long have you been working with uh eric broser uh since november Great. And, yeah, end of October is when I started working with him. So right after Olympia. That's terrific. He's yeah. Been, um, I would say what what would you say, you you know, up and coming competitors should look for to to find a good coach. What what kind of advice could you give? Honestly, like talk to them, interview them, make sure like your personalities mesh, mm -hmm. um, and maybe if you. If you have experience in like coaching people and stuff, because so like I, I train people too. Um mm -hmm. I want to find somebody that's got a similar philosophy to that I do. I just I hire somebody because you know I, I'll look at myself and be like, oh, this should be okay, or you know, I maybe I just need to tweak this, where they'll see something different from the outside. So I will hire a coach to tell me that and it takes my guesswork out of it too, and I can focus on my clients. Mm -hmm. Um but find somebody that's you know got a similar philosophy to you they're not going to put you instantly on you know a super low calorie meal plan because that that you're already starving on and you're at the beginning of your prep because that shouldn't ever happen mm -hmm. um and so just just look for things that you know trust your instincts with your coach i i have you know i've had two a couple amazing coaches um i worked with fred smalls for a long time and he's awesome um, and then I worked with Brent Swanson, um, and who's my husband and my brother's current coach. Loved working with him. Um, and the only reason I swapped over to Eric was just because of the amount of t amount I travel, the way he does his training plans, it just fit my travel schedule a little bit better. So that that was the only reason I swapped. So I wouldn't have had my brother and my husband go train with somebody like if that was the case. Oh, sure. Yeah, I understand that. I um I like how Brent during the Arnold, he and Autumn like dressed up oh, like yeah. Conan the Barbarian and and I forget that her character's name, but it was so funny and they uh they had um like some kind of funny skits and stuff. They're just they're 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 an awesome people. couple. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> They're such amazing people. I'm I've been so grateful to have been good friends with them and like to make, become friends with them and um you know still be able to reach out if I have a question and and uh, yeah so it's been great and my husband and my brother have loved working with them. That's terrific. Yeah, I, yeah. I got to interview Autumn um last year sometime. I think it was last summer and yeah they're they are they're really a good couple and they're yeah really a um kind of a bodybuilding power couple I think you know. they are yeah. Um, yeah. now, um, in terms of, uh, what would you say was like the most challenging aspect of competition prep for you? Uh, balancing, um, my military schedule with prep. Like that's probably the hardest. I mean, I've been overseas once, one week a month since November. Really? <laughs> Just the constant travel. I mean, that does get a little, a little hard because you can take food with you for the first couple of days, but not for the whole thing. So 
trying oh. to make sure that you're hitting the map the right macros when you need it yeah mm -hmm. where have you been or can, i don't know if you can say it, going overseas oh. oh yeah i've been i've been um germany and morocco and italy and <laughs> yeah wow that's so cool could you time it so you could do like a show in portugal or something <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> That would be kind of interesting if you could do it. That, like that. would be cool. But no, <laughs> I would not want to do a peak week while I'm working. <laughs> like that. Sure, I understand. <laughs> oh man, um, <laughs> that would be tough to do. I bet that would be very tough. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, in terms of you go between Utah and um, Montana, and um, do you find? That you have this kind of supportive bodybuilding communities there it, with those two places. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I mean, all all of our people here in our gyms. So I'm actually in my gym right now in Montana. Um, uh, everybody here is super supportive. My family's supportive. I mean, obviously, my husband, and my brother are are also doing it. My girls, they'll come and practice posing with us and do everything else. So Montana, super supportive. Utah, I have an awesome community out there too. Um, I have people that come in, they'll come and just train with me just to help train with me in Utah. Uh, and, and, uh, I've, I've got a really good group of friends there too, that are all, all into this and super supportive. My, my work is super supportive. My command team is super supportive. So great. That's, oh, that's terrific. That's good that you have that kind of support, especially with, with all the, the activities you have going on too, you know, just having, um, then maybe give you a little grace to, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's terrific. That's great. Um, now, um, in terms of your husband and your brother competing at, for their, their, basically their debut and amateur debut at triple O, um, how long have they been training? Uh, they both started, uh, end of October. Oh, so we all started prep about the same time. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and is um where did you say your brother lives? He lives here in Helena. Oh, he does? Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I was thinking uh in terms of um doing prep together can be challenging sometimes because you're 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 all depleted and you're all kind of maybe a little hangry and stuff. So <laughs> how have you <laughs> managed your No, life? we've all been good. I mean I I don't get like angry or anything unless unless I've missed a meal. Like then then my mood gets a little short. But for the most part, I stay pretty even keel throughout my prep. Um, maybe a little bit more tired. Same thing with everybody else that I've noticed. They might just get a little bit more tired, but nobody's been, you know, super cranky or anything. And uh, we found a little a little life hack with our kids, which is awesome. Our kids are old enough that they like they like to cook their own food. Um, so with me and my husband both being in prep, they were tired of chicken and, you know, beef and everything. So, so I, uh, did this, I asked them, I said, well, what if you, you, you can make your own food? And so they decided, that, okay, well, I want to do that. So I pulled up Hello Fresh, let them pick out three meals. So they get three meals a week that they get to cook themselves. They get to pick out whatever they want. And then they do that. Cause I mean, the price of it, it's either that, or you take them out to go get something or, um, hmm. And I'd rather them eat something that they cooked and learn how to cook than do that. And it's healthier. Yeah, that's true. Is it tough? So they, they've been loving that. Is it tough having the food for your kids there though? Cause it's stuff that you can't necessarily eat. No, not at all. No, you're you still gotta be a parent. I mean, the kids still have to have kids food. I, we've got, I mean, we've got the chips, we've got the cookies. I mean, Everything that a kid normally would eat, they don't get deprived from. So my kids don't have to diet just because we diet. I understand. Yeah, that's true. That that's good though. And um, um, and that, I think that's uh challenging being a mom and and doing the bodybuilding career too. But um, do you think that they would uh, I think you mentioned during Glenn's interview, but mentioned here, are they interested in pursuing bodybuilding? I know they're kind of young. Maybe. I mean. They they do like coming and posing and working out and you know every now and then they'll joke and they'll be like I need a diet with you mom it's like no. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but they're they're really good about it man if you if you like look at a cookie like oh I kind of want one of the cookies they'll both look at you like it's not on your diet you can't have it so they're <laughs> they're they're really good at making sure you, 
they keep you in mind. So that's awesome. I bet they're proud of you too. You're like a superhero mom. Oh, they both, they're super proud. They're super proud of me and their dad and their uncle. So yeah. That's awesome. That's very cool. Um, in terms of, I was curious with your husband and brother, have you had a hand in like in coaching them that, since you have, you have a coach experience yourself? Um, so we, I started coaching them when they first started and then, uh, it's always easier to have somebody else tell you what to do other than your spouse or your older sister. So, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, Brent, uh, I talked to Brent and Brent's like, absolutely. I'll, I'll take them on. So he, he took them and started coaching them. But, um, you know, when it comes to like posing and stuff, I still pose both my husband and my brother and help them with, with their poses and, you know, just getting the, the right foot placing, the right movement, placing the hand right. So, I mean, that's all kind of an art too. So I still do a lot of coaching on their posing and, and uh, if they have a question on like, what does this say for Like, what does this mean by this diet or this exercise? I'll still help them with that. And so my, my, sure. husband, my husband and my brother are both trainers too. So it, it does help. We all kind of have that foundational knowledge, but it's, it's good. Especially we always thinking for their first show, I, I can see where helping them with posing would be important because, uh, yeah. You can make it or break it, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, totally, it is. It's important. And which divisions are they doing? Uh, my husband's doing classic physique and my brother is doing physique. Okay, terrific. And are they the one, the show that you're guest posing at, are they competing there? Uh, my husband is not, my brother is. Uh, my husband is actually com competing again at the end of April at the Emerald Cup, which is one of the shows I tan at, so. Nice. Oh, that's a good show, Emerald Cup. Yeah. yeah. Very, good. Very cool. Wow. Um, and in terms of, uh, um, I wanted to ask you real quick about Maximus. Like, how long have you been, did, you know, making suits and, and designing them like that? Um, so the end of 21 is when I starting my business so i've been making my own suits for a while um and then i uh had helped another competitor out just like you should totally make your own business out of this so i did <laughs> and um and then i sponsored Rashana and for the first time in 22 and ivy and those were my first two girls that i sponsored and then it's just kind of grown up after that wow how many suits do you make per year would you say um competition suits i think last year i made like 20 competition suits and a bunch of practice suits so wow wow that's cool and you mentioned during glenn's interview that you you make men's suits too mm -hmm. i make the, the men's bodybuilding trunks wow that's cool so do you actually do you actually sew them and stuff and I sew everything, yeah. So even the, even the women's bikinis, like everything is 100% custom to the person. We uh, we come up with a theme or a color, and then um, and then I come up with, like, I do a couple of drawings, let them just pick out the, the design that they like the best or the one that, like, um, resonates more with them, and then go from there. Wow, that is so cool. You're the first uh, competitor I've talked to who's... Uh make suits. I haven't even talked with another suit designer like that or maker. So that's really neat. Yeah. So you have all your supplies, all the crystals and everything. Yeah. All crystals. I make all the connectors. So if you look at my suits, they're all, all the, the neck connectors are super unique because I make those completely. I solder them. So um, yeah, wow. they're different. And as a maker, you, you know, like why they're so expensive because they are really labor intensive, aren't they? Yeah, they take, I mean, the competition suits take anywhere between eight to 12 hours, depending on the design. Mm -hmm. um, if we're just putting all the crystals on them, if it's a fully encrusted one. And then, uh, so the crystals aren't cheap. <laughs> so yeah. that's, part of the, that's part of the expense. And then, um, and just the time that you put into it. I mean, it takes you about one suit a day, basically. If that's all you did for the day, you could do a whole suit. Sure, I understand. Yeah, you're gonna one of these days. You'll get a super wealthy billionaire that wants all diamonds or something. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to pay up front, you know, to get all. Yeah, completely. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. 
Uh, that's really cool. I think that's awesome that you do that. That's amazing. Um, um, so I just have a few more questions. Uh, sure. I was curious when you're out in public, do you like to show off your muscles or do you prefer to stay covered up? Um, I wear a lot of tank tops and t-shirts. It's not just because, not because I'm trying to cover them or anything uh, it's, or show them off. It's just t-shirt, like t-shirts and tank tops fit better for yeah. the long sleeve shirt. Um, uh, so I don't really try to hide them and I don't really try to show them off. It just, I just act normal out in public. <laughs> what kind of, do you get a lot of uh, response though from, from, um, hopefully positive response? I get a lot of positive response. So like once in a while I'll get the look or like a little kid be like, oh. but <laughs> um, I get a lot of women that'll come up and be like, I love your arms. I would love to have your arms. Um, so I, I do get a lot of positive feedback from, from a lot of women. And uh, yesterday I took my girls to go do Manny Petty's. Um, and uh, I had a guy in there. He's like, do you compete? And I said, I do. He's like, God, your arms are bigger than most guys' arms. I was like, oh, well, thank you. I worked hard for them. So. Nice. I know. That's awesome. Great. Good job. That's so. perfect. That's good that you got good feedback like that. Yeah. Um, I was curious, like, in because you're in the States, you're in Montana and Utah are, you know, somewhat conservative, too. So I wasn't sure how. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, the the military folks you work with, they're they're supportive, too? Super supportive. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah my uh my boss and i will you know go and do like a quad stomp once in a while and joke around and say oh why why are your legs so small why are your shoulders so small so, oh <laughs> very cool do you work with any other competitors offhand i was curious i do i work with one other uh he's in he's in one of our and one of our units that's underneath us so yeah he's i do work with him he's awesome he's uh uh, Trevor Hawkins is his name. So yeah, he's awesome. all over Instagram posting his stuff too. He's, he's awesome. He is, he's a men's bodybuilder. Um, hoping, I hope he gets his pro card this year. He deserves it. So Trevor Hawkins. Okay, cool. I'll look him up too. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I was curious, uh, um, and I know you're new to the, the pro world of bodybuilding, but from what you've seen of the bodybuilding world, if you were in a leadership position with IFBB, uh, what would you do to improve the sport of bodybuilding and how would you try to make the sport better? Um, <clears throat> hmm. you, you know, I read that question and I've been thinking about how to answer that one since I saw it. Uh, sure. The, uh, I think, you know, getting out into the public more with the the female the female bodybuilders specifically and even the physique girls because I mean some of those girls are more shredded than the women bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. Just getting out into like the public venues where you can be in the eye of public, like at a like I was talking to one of my friends, where it's like go to a comic con or something like that, where you know those types of looks are things that could draw attention, not necessarily the bodybuilding shows or anything, because. You know, everybody's there for the bodybuilding, but if you get it out into like the, the Comic Con or the Fit Con or things like that, where you can bring more people in and recruit people to that and, you know, make it more of a positive look, not just the all these girls are big muscular girls. Um, I think that would help immensely. I could see that too. I'm, one thing I would like to see more too is like some local news stories. Um, oh, absolutely. Because just to kind of raise awareness of of bodybuilding, but I'll you know show like the personal side of 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 um, the the sport, you know, and just um, but yeah, it it doesn't come up that often. But is is that something you would would be interested in doing? Yeah, yeah, I would totally do. I think I think it's important for people to know that you know just because you're a female bodybuilder doesn't mean like your entire life revolves around working out and competing. I mean, I. I have a full life outside of it. So I'm a mom first and then, and then a soldier, then a competitor. So. Yeah, totally. I understand that. I know um the Sherry Priyami there, there was a local news story in, in I think in out of Orlando area, but um it showed her working out, but also her work as a dental hygienist. And it, yeah, I think it kind of shows, like you said, just there's life beyond bodybuilding, but 
but it's I think it's good to brag about you guys being these amazing women and 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 the fact that you're local you know what I mean it, it's kind of like a kind of a, a celebrity in your backyard kind of thing you know yeah or y'all should be more like celebrities I think um now do you ever find yourself the target of uh, fit shaming because I was surprised that that bodybuilders have to deal with that you know and and there's some trolls on social media that can just be really nasty but do you ever have to deal with that on instagram and such you know luckily i haven't so i i, I mean i'm still probably a pretty low-key person in the fitness world so sure. okay. no, so no. yeah luckily i haven't luckily i haven't had to deal with any of that so that's good i'm glad to hear that that's really good um and the one thing I wanted to mention with Maximus, because I think we talked about it before we started recording, but who are you working with, uh, uh, Maximus, for your in terms of designing suits? Oh, who do I sponsor this year? Uh huh. Um. So this year, this year I sponsor Ivy Rain, Rashonda Ball as well, um, Cheryl Myers, um, Ashley Blakey. Um, let's see here. D Jackson, I'll keep her if yeah, she, I don't think she's competing this year, but she'll compete next year. Lacey Pruitt, when she finally goes and competes again, I'll I'll make her suit. Um, and then uh, I feel like I'm forgetting. So, oh, Alex Hall, yeah, Alex Hall. I'm still I still have her. So we've got a couple awesome suits to, ready to design for her, and um, yeah, it'll be good. You got such a good lineup there. That's some amazing ladies for sure. And yeah, you said and I've got a couple of NPC girls that I've become really good friends with over the few last few years. So I uh, I told them I'd sponsor them for their shows this year. But really, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah. that's um, um, no, I think that's really amazing. That that you know to have such high quality competitors that you sponsor too. That's testament to your good work. I think for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> oh yeah, I haven't, I haven't let any of them down yet. So yeah, that's terrific. And you work with um, a variety of different divisions, I guess, right? In terms of women, Fig yeah, figure, physique, and bodybuilding. Um, I don't have any wellness or bikini girls yet. Sure. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I make I make a lot more of the the physique or figure style suits than I do the bikinis. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They're, they are quite a bit different, I think, aren't they in terms of the design and the, and the way you make them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I think that's all I had for questions. Is there anything that I've missed that you would like to address or? No, I think you got it all. Terrific. Thank you so much. Um, like I mentioned, if you wouldn't mind flexing for me and um <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I will get this posted soon. And I look forward to meeting the three of you um next week at the triple O. Yeah, we look forward to meeting you too. Thank you. And um, like I said, I'll have um some of the people we mentioned and the information about your your companies and your gym down below in the comments. So just um look for that. And Perfect. um but thanks again, Michelle. It's really awesome speaking with you. Yeah, thank you again for having me. You're welcome. And um, right. I know you got George Page interview coming up soon too. So that'll be fun. Yeah, this afternoon. Yeah. He's so awesome. Yeah, I like him a lot. So give, give a shout out to George there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.